Hello and welcome to the October Wednesday webinar from the IEA Clean Coal Centre. My name is Benedicta and I'm the Communications Officer here. Our monthly webinars are based on our technical reports which are available from our website www.iea-coal.org. Residents of member countries and employees of sponsoring organisations can download our reports at no charge after one-off registration. Please visit our website for details. The subject for today's webinar is Global Coal Power Fleet Efficiency Improvement, presented by Dr. Chen Su. There you go. Hello, everyone. And today I'm going to talk about my latest report titled Global Coal Power Fleet Efficiency Improvement. It is just out, uh, coming out in draft for peer review and uh, it's expected to be published before the end of the year. For this piece of work, I examined the overall efficiency gains of the global coal power fleet over the past two decades or so. I compare this with the key policy frameworks, environmental regulations and the market mechanisms relating to coal power generation. The aim was to identify the main drivers and the barriers to improving coal fleet efficiency in the past. With this information and the insights, we can help decision makers gauge effective approaches to minimizing the environmental impacts of coal power generation through fleet efficiency improvements. As individual countries have unique situations, some key aspects of the power system will differ from one country to another. Therefore, policy solutions and the market mechanisms that work well in driving coal fleet efficiency improvement in one country may not necessarily work in others. Where each country has its unique context, understanding the situation in other countries can help accelerate progress to achieve a power sector that is less costly, more efficient and environmentally sustainable. So case studies of some of the main coal using countries, China, India, Japan, and the USA are conducted in this study. First, an introduction to the IEA Clinical Center. We are a technology collaboration program mandated by the International Energy Agency. We provide independent information and analysis on all coal-related trends. We promote best practice in all aspects of coal production, transport, processing, and utilization. We address the role of coal in the energy trilemma and the, the need to balance security of supply, affordability, and the environmental issues. Our work is focused on reducing emissions of CO2 and other pollutants from coal use through high efficiency, low emissions technologies. Back to my study. It is important to understand at the start what the, the efficiency of the power plant is and why it is important. The efficiency of the electric, electricity generating system describes the electric energy output as a fraction of energy input, usually expressed by percentages. Why does it matter? Well, the more efficient a power plant is, the less coal is required to produce per unit of electricity. So for the same output, there is less mining needed, less coal to transport and the process, which reduce the, the environmental impact of the fuel production. At the combustion point of, of the coal, less emissions of CO2 and the other pollutants such as SOx, NOx, and the particulate matter. Each percent improvement in the efficiency of a power plant 
reduces CO2 emissions by 2 to 3 percent, thus improving the efficiency of coal, pl coal power plants can have a serious impact on global emissions. However, the calculation of a coal power plant efficiency is not as simple as it may seem, and there is no definitive methodology. Efficiency of a coal plant, coal-fired power plant, is determined based on the energy content of coal using either higher heating value or lower heating value of the coal. Higher heating value include the latent heat of evaporation of water, where the lower heating value does not. Therefore, higher heating value based efficiency is always slightly lower than the lower heating value based ones, usually by a few percent. A plant efficiency is also sometimes quoted as a net or gross plant efficiency. Net plant efficiency is the ratio of the useful energy output to the grid by a power plant to the energy input to the plant. Growth efficiency is the ratio of the total amount of electricity generated by a generator to the energy input. The efficiency of coal fleet discussed in this webinar describes the global or national average operating efficiency of coal power generation. The operating efficiency of a plant may vary from its design efficiency due to various factors. The design efficiency of a coal power plant is determined by the chosen technologies, such as whether it's subcritical, supercritical, or ultra-supercritical and is influenced by when the plant was built. Aging, poor operation and the maintenance practice and the cycling operation mode can cause significant wear and tear, which decrease the operation efficiency over time. Partial load operation and the retrofitting emission control systems on a coal power plant can also reduce its operating efficiency. Power plant efficiency values are often calculated and expressed on different bases using various assumptions. Making comparison of efficiency data from different sources difficult. While the actual efficiency values of a given power fleet, a coal fleet vary depending on the sources, the efficiency trend from these sources should be consistent and the trends are what matters in this, uh, in this study. The majority of coal-fired power plants in operation today are pulverized, coal-fired, and almost all of them are steam power generating units using the Rankine cycle. This slide shows the relationship between the steam conditions used and the efficiency they can achieve, as well as their carbon intensity. Today's state-of-the-art ultra-supercritical coal power plants have achieved a net generation efficiency of around 47.5%. And a coal power plant with design efficiency of about 49% is under construction. Modern technologies are capable of producing electricity from coal at high efficiency and low emissions. The commercially available emission control systems can reduce air pollutant emissions from coal power plants to very low levels comparable to those of gas-fired power plants. This slide shows the trend of, in average, operating efficiency of the global coal fleet over the past two decades. The efficiency has increased by over three percentage points since 1996, and the increase accelerated since 2002, uh, sorry, 2006. This increase is mainly a result of large number of new and more efficient coal power plants were built and the old, uh, old inefficient plants shattered during this period. 
according to IEA's is estimate, the current world average efficiency of electricity production from coal is around 37.5%. Uh, this is 10 percentage point below the efficiency of 47.5% that today's ultra supercritical power plant can achieve. If more plants were upgraded to this high efficiency, as you can see from the bottom figure here, the dramatic impact this would have on CO2 emissions. Therefore, there is a substantial room for improvement. Now let's look at China. China has the world's largest coal power generating uh, generation capacity at more than 981 gigawatts. In 2002, the Chinese power sector was structurally reformed and the five state-owned power generation corporations were created which dominate domestic coal power generation today. In recent years, China has issued a host of policies along with several programs aiming to increase efficiency and uh, reduce emissions from coal power plants. National targets for emission reduction and the coal power generation efficiency are set in the five-year plans and the action plans. Many small inefficient coal plants with a total capacity of around 100 gigawatts were decommissioned between 2006 and 2015 under the large substituting small program. Technical standards set the minimum size and efficiency for new coal power plants and require the use of best available technologies. As a result, by 2018, China has installed around 462 supercritical units with a capacity of 244 gigawatts and the 235 uh, ultra supercritical units, totally more than 900, uh, 193 gigawatts. The top figure here shows the size distribution and the bottom one shows the technology distribution of Chinese coal power fleet. The action plan on upgrade and the reconstruction of coal-fired power plants for energy conservation and the emission reduction issued in 2014 required existing 300 and 600 megawatts class coal power plants to be upgraded. Emission, uh, efficiency standards and the timelines for appliance were set. China has recently announced the completion of the upgrade and reconstruction of coal power plants program a year ahead of the schedule. So not surprisingly, there has been a continuous improvement in the efficiency of Chinese coal fleet with a net increase of 7.57 percentage points observed between 2003 and 2018. This is likely to continue as smaller, less efficient plants continue to be replaced by ultra supercritical plant. More generally, how has this improvement in efficiency of the fleet been achieved? China has a top-down economy Compliance with government policies and the regulatory mandates is the main driver. Strong policies, regulations and strict performance and environmental standards have been implemented. Standards have, been, uh, have become increasingly stringent with time. Also technical standards ensure the new coal power plants adopt the best available technologies. Mandatory targets for emission reduction, efficiency improvement, shutting small, old inefficient power plants and upgrading existing coal power plants are set at the national level 
and the coal power generators must meet them. Supportive policies, financial support and the subsidies in the form of feed-in tariffs have also been put in place to incentivize investments in efficiency improvements of power plants. Even in China, there are some barriers. China has recently experienced overcapacity, leading to a substantial reduction in the utilization rate of coal power generators, which reduce efficiency of operation. Also, the rapid development of renewable power has resulted in reduced profitability of coal-fired power plants. Now let's move, uh, look, in, look at India. As nearly 200 million Indians still live without access to electricity, the main objective of Indian's energy policy are to achieve universal access to energy and energy security. Before the 1990s, Indian's power sector was dominated by vertically integrated state utilities, which were tightly regulated. Its coal fleet consisted of mainly small, inefficient subcritical generating units, which were crippled by a lack of proper maintenance and inadequate investment. Since, since the 1990s, the India has implemented a suite of reforms unbundling and the privatizing the state-dominated power sector, restructuring the power generation, transmission, and the distribution systems, and establishing the uh, independent central and the state regulators, which created a more open competitive market, attracting investment from public and the private sectors. Of the main goals of power sector reform in India, the most successful has been that of attracting private investors. As a result, there has been a boom in coal-based capa uh, generating capacity recently, as shown in the top figure here. The favorite economic environment and the policies to encourage building more efficient power plants incentivize a significant amount of investment in large and the supercritical coal-fired power plants in the last decade. This combined with the planned closure of old inefficient coal power plants has resulted in a considerable efficiency improvement of Indian coal fleet. However, although much supercritical built in the past decade, the bulk of the fleet is still subcritical as seen in the bottom figure here. Until recently, India's overall coal power fleet, uh, coal power fleet uh, generation uh, efficiency remained relatively low, noticeably lower than the world average the global average coal fleet efficiency is included in this figure for comparison. Since 2012, there has been a clear upward trend with the most significant improvements seen in 2015 and 2016, which coincide with the operation of the large number of more efficient new generating units in the last 10 years, particularly those supercritical units brought it brought online after 2010. The effective policy framework and the favorable economic environment are the main drivers behind the recent efficiency improvement of Indian's Indian coal fleet. However, the cost of production plus a return on investment namely the cost plus tariff system operating in India does not incentivize investment in efficiency improvement. The electricity pricing mechanisms is stiff and are not rationalized to reflect the changing cost of electricity. 
the untargeted subsidy mechanisms under which power tariffs are kept artificially low undermine the cost recovery prospect of, of investment and affect the profitability of power generators. All these, among others, discourage generators from improving and investing in uh, energy efficiency. Let's move to Japan. As an island country, self-sufficiency has been one of the main objectives of Japan's energy policies, which are based on fundamental principles of 3E plus S, that is safety, energy security, economic efficiency, and the environmental uh, suitability. Before the late 1990s, the Japanese electricity market was divided into two uh, into 10 geographic areas, each with a vertical integrated utility operating in it. Reform to liberalize Japan's electricity market, beginning with power generation, started in 1990s, and it has been a long and a gradual process. The Fukushima accident in 2011 accelerated these reforms, the reforms to fully liberalize electricity market and to bring competition in the entire electricity supply, uh, supply chain. Power generators have responded to the market reforms by increasing their business efficiency to be more competitive while lowering electricity prices. The Environmental Impact Assessment Law enacted in 1997 and the Energy Efficiency Standards set up in 2014 ensure that the best available technologies are employed in coal power plants. As a result, Japan's coal fleet has high proportion of supercritical and ultra-supercritical generating units, as shown in this slide here. Japan has one of the world's most efficient coal power fleet. The national average coal power generation efficiency in Japan has been consistently higher than the world average, and the gap has increased over the years. The rapid improvement in coal power fleet efficiency happened between 1995 and the 2002, which coincides with the reforms that opened the power generation market and that partially opened the retail market. The competitions in the liberalized, liberalized market provide economic incentives that motivated Japanese power generators to invest in power plant efficiency improvements. Sound regulation ensure modern technologies are employed in coal power plants to achieve high efficiency and the minimal environmental impacts. There are no obvious barriers to Japan's pursuance of high efficiency power generation. Finally, the USA. If it, uh, electricity in the USA was mainly supplied by vertically integrated utilities in the 1970s and 80s. Deregulation and the power market restructuring in the USA started in the 1990s, but were carried out at a varying extent in individual states. There are a number of policies and the regulations regulating coal power generation and the emission reductions, in particular, the environmental regulations. As seen from the bottom figure here, the, US, the USA has an aging coal fleet. The majority of the existing coal power generating units operate at inefficient sub, subcritical steam conditions. Well, Almost all the rest are, are supercritical units, as shown in the 
top figure. There is only one ultra supercritical coal power plant operating in the USA. In recent years, coal's share of generation in the USA has declined steadily, which is reflected by the reduction in average utilization rate and the decrease in the total capacity due to retirement of coal-fired power plants. There are several reasons behind this decline. The abundant supply of cheap gas put economic pressure on coal power generation. The red figure here shows the reduction of coal power generator utilization rate with a decrease, a decrease in gas prices. The increase in variable renewable energy penetration and the aging uncompetitive coal fleet also led to decline of coal power. Some policies and the regulations have also contributed to this problem. For example, the record number of coal power plants retiring observed in 2015 seen in the figure on the left is believed to be partly driven by the legislation to reduce emissions of mercury and air toxics, the so-called MATS rule that came into effect in that year. For aging coal plant, some operators have found it makes more sense to close the plant rather than invest in pollution control technologies to comply with new legislation. In addition, New coal projects in the USA are likely to encounter campaigns from environmental activists, causing time and the budget overrun. All this discourages power plant owners from investing in efficiency upgrade uh, projects. As a result of these factors leading to a lack of investment in new coal plants or much upgrading of existing units. Data from the IEA and the World Energy Council suggest that the overall efficiency of US coal fleet has not changed much over the past decades. Several studies show that restructuring the electricity market resulted in efficiency improvement of US coal power plants. However, the economic pressure caused by cheap gas supply, increasing renewable power and the aging coal fleet, some policy issues and the societal pressure are the dry, uh, barriers to coal fleet efficiency upgrade in the USA. Finally, the key messages from this study. The average efficiency of global coal power fleet has increased steadily over the past two decades or so, and the currently is around 37.5% but there is still big room for improvement. Both policy regular, regulatory mandates and the economic incentives are the main drivers to power plant efficiency upgrades. An open and competitive electricity market provides economic incentives that motivate power plant owners to actively improve the efficiency of coal power plants. Government policies play a crucial role as a liberalized electricity market is usually a result of and can be influenced by changes in government policies. Policy solutions are most effective if the policies are well formulated and are fully implemented. Policies, however, if not carefully considered and the poorly designed could have negative effects and the discourage investment in efficiency upgrading projects. 
thank you for your for listening and if you have any questions I've, i'll try to answer them Okay, the first question. Uh, as we know, the reality of global power generation is that coal will continue to be an important contributor to meeting energy needs. However, the public perception is that coal is done and should be or should be soon. How do you think the findings of your study could help to present a clearer and a more accurate picture of our future energy mix? Well, for the developed country, probably they can afford to face out coal, but for developing countries, especially developing countries in the Asia and Africa, coal is indispensable for electricity supply. And the, my report can just shows the uh, coal power generation technology can achieve high efficiency and the low emission. And the, the government should formulate proper policies to encourage the uh, coal fleet efficiency improvement to minimize the environmental impact of coal power generation, and that can be done. Uh, here is another question. The US coal power fleet is much older than that of China, and yet the efficiency seem to be not so different. Is that surprising, given the recent advances in technology? with the latest ultra supercritical stations achieving 47%. And if so, what is the reason? Well, from my study, the Chinese coal fleet efficiency is higher than the US. It's not similar. It's the current Chinese coal fleet efficiency is reaching 40%, where the US is is uh, lower than 37. So the um, apparently the adapting the ultra supercritical technology has increased the Chinese uh, national coal fleet efficiency above the US ones. Thank you so much, Chen. The report on this topic will be published by the end of the year, and the slides will soon be available to download from the webinar page of our website. The next webinar from us will be on the 20th of November at 12 p.m. again, and will be presented by Dr. Andrew Minchner on the topic coal and the energy trilemma. Thank you all for joining us today, and goodbye.